What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Mets Central. This is Mets Fan Reaction Game 123, where the New York Mets defeat the Miami Mons by a score of 4 to nothing. And before we get into this post-game recap, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe as well. We greatly appreciate you guys' support on the channel, and we want to keep feeding you guys content, so just keep feeding us likes and subscriptions. We greatly appreciate it. Also, make sure to turn on post notifications to let you know anytime we upload a video or go live here on the channel. Now, look, there is one place to start with this game, right? And that's Luis Severino. What a pitching performance from this guy today. Dominant. Just dominant. Whatever word you want to use, but the guy was simply incredible today. I mean, a complete game shutout. His first complete game shutout since 2018 when he was on the Yankees. And it was the Mets' first complete game shutout by a pitcher since April 23rd, 2021, a game which I was at, by the way, where Jacob De where Jacob DeGrom threw a complete game shutout against the Washington Nationals. But, I mean, you look at the final line from tonight. I mean, just take a look at this. Nine innings pitched, four hits allowed, no earned runs, eight strikeouts, one walk, 113 pitches, lowers his season ERA down to a 3.91. And what is the one thing that we have been, you know, talking about on this, whether it be the post-game reactions or the podcast about Mets starters, length and lack of walks. And Luis Severino did that perfectly today. Obviously, with the complete nine innings and one walk, that's what you want to see. That is what you want to see. And another great thing, you know, in yesterday's game, Sean and I obviously started. He went seven innings. Jose Buda was the only reliever that was used in yesterday's game. He pitched two innings. Obviously, with Seve throwing a complete game shutout, you didn't have to use any bullpen arms. So through the first two games of the series, the Mets only, only have had to use one bullpen arm in Jose Buda, which is big because now just in case of tomorrow, just in case Paul Blackburn doesn't have it and you need relievers, or, or even like if Blackburn pitches six, five innings, let's say, and you and you need arms, you have arms available in that pen, and they are well-rested. So, And also, it was a game that you know the Mets had to win, first of all, because obviously, like we mentioned before, on you know, when we had the last when we had the last podcast, you had that horrible series loss to the Oakland days where you dropped two out of three. They had to come out strong against this Miami Marlins team, and so far they have. They've taken they've taken the first two games of this series, but now look, job's not done. Job is not done because you have to sweep the ace tomorrow. You have to. Especially, you know, since your next series is the Baltimore Orioles, a very good team, I mean, one of the best teams in the MLB and one of the best teams in the American League. So, but also, uh, shout out on on Wardy NYM's Twitter account, um, Isaac Rothman, a guy who he um, he has on the channel sometimes from time to time. He breaks down starting um, he he breaks down uh, starting pitchers is um his lines and how they did in games. Well, he posted a thread today on Twitter about, about Severino's performance today. And I mean, let me read you guys some stuff because it, it was simply incredible. I mean, obviously his probably his three best pitch today were his fastball, his cutter and his sinker. We're getting a lot of misses on that. We're getting a lot of light contact, which then led to ground balls and, and fly outs and pop-ups, which, which is big because if in today's game, since, Usually, you know, uh, managers and, and pitching coaches, they're not going to let you throw a lot of pitches in games. So if you want to throw a complete game shot, you really have to limit it. Like like you'll see probably the highest a, you know, a manager will let you go now is 120 pitches max. Max. Savvy, he was at 113 today. But, I mean, like I said, the light contact and the fact that he got a lot of swings and misses on stuff, it, it, it helped this case to, you know, go and um, pitch a complete game shot out. But – you know, just take a look at some of the numbers, right? Expected weighted on base average for his cutter, 0 0.257. For his four seamer, 0 0.287. For a sinker, 0 0.245. Just beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. It, it, it's what you want to see. Now, look, obviously, tomorrow, like I said, they got the, they have to complete the sweep. You got Paul Blackburn on the mound tomorrow, but it's big. And then also today, which I, which I didn't talk about so far. The Mets offense, now look, you look at the box score, you say four runs, seven hits, you know, not really that impressive. But you know what was very impressive about today's performance from the Mets? Anytime you had a guy in, in scoring position or on base, the Mets drove him in. So they got the big hit today, which is something that we haven't seen a lot lately. 
But yeah, anyway, let's get into the actual post game recap now. Obviously, on the mound for the Mets, Luis Severino, and on the mound for the Miami Marlins, it was Meyer. Starting off with the game, Xavier Edwards will lead up for the Marlins. Luis Severino would get him to fly out to Jesse Winker in right field. He then get Jake Berger to pop up on the plate to Francisco Alvarez, and he would get Jesus Sanchez to strike out then the first inning. Then moving on to the bottom of the first, Francisco Lindor leading off, and he would continue where. And listen, Lindor's hot right now. He is hot. He's swinging the bat. He's swinging the bat well, and he continues it by leadoff home run to put the Mets up one to nothing. He would hit a hit a home run to the to, um, right center field. Then follow that up. Mark Fiennes would hit a single. Brandon will then strike out, and J.D. Martinez would ground into an inning and double play. Then top of the second, Jonah Bride would uh, ground that soft to Severino. He would toss the ball over to Pete to get to get the out. Derek Hill would then line out to Harrison Bader in center. Kyle Stowers would then walk, and Sevy would get Otto Lopez to strike out to end the inning. Then bottom of the second, you got Pete Alonso uh, leading off the inning, and he would hit a home run to put the Mets up 2 to nothing. So Mets get out to a quick start. Then Jesse Winker would ground out to Otto Lopez at second base. Francisco Alvarez would strike out. Jeff Me would walk. Harrison Bader would then be hit by pitch. So first and second for the Mets with two outs. Wouldn't get a, wouldn't drive another run that inning, though, as Francisco Lindor would fly out to Kyle Stowers in left field. Then top of the third, Vidal Brujan would hit a single. Nick Fortes would line out. Then a pickoff, a pickoff error throw by Luis Severino, a, a bad throw to Pete. So Vidal Brujan would move over to second base. Then just a weird double play, and I'm sure... I'm sure the Marlins are not going to be happy about this because Xavier Edwards hits into a double play and he hit it right up the middle to Francisco Lindor. And usually, you know, with base running, anytime you're at second base and if, if a ball is either hit to the left side of the infield or right at second base, you don't move because obviously, you know, the, the shortstop, whoever feels that ball is going to have an easy time to throw you at third base. Well, Vidal Brujan, poor, poor base running decision. He would, he would start to run towards third base. Lindor would flip it over. They would get him in a rundown. They were able to get Brujan out. And then Xavier Edwards would try to get it, would try to leg out to get the second base. He would get um thrown out though at second base. So an inning ending double play right there. Not the usual type of inning ending double play you see, but hey, listen, you take them any way you any way you can get them. Then bottom of the third, Mark Fiance would ground out to Xavier Edwards. Brandon Nimmo would then hit a triple. So Nimmo looking a lot better so far since being moved down to the three hole. JD Martinez would then walk. Pete Alonso would then strike out. Jesse Winker, though, would come would come through clutch as he would hit a single, which would score Brandon Nimmo. And um Jesse Winker was would be able to get the second base. JD Martinez would be able to get the throw in that play because there was a throwing error. So single uh, an RBI single, but on a throwing error. Martinez moves up to third, and Winker moves up to second base. Francisco Alvarez, though, would ground out to end the inning, so no more runs there for the Mets. Then top of the fourth, Jake Berger would hit a leadoff double. Then Sevy wouldn't let wouldn't let that bother him, though, as he would get Jesus Sanchez to strike out. He'd get Jonah Bright to pop out, and he would get Derek Hill to ground out to Jeff McNeil to end the inning. Then bottom of the fourth, Jeff McNeil would hit a ground out. Harrison Bader would then ground out. Francisco Lindor would walk, and then Mark Fientos again, has been hitting well since being moved into the two-hole. He hits an RBI double to bring in Francisco Lindor, and that puts up the Mets four to nothing. And that put that puts the Mets up four to nothing. Sorry, Brandon Nimmo would then ground out the end, end the inning. Top of the fifth, Kyle Stowers would ground out to Pete at first. Otto Lopez would then hit a double, but Savvy once again didn't let didn't let that bother him as he would get Vital Brew on the ground out, and he would get Nick Fortes to pop out softly to himself. Then bottom of the fifth, uh, Emmanuel Ramirez replaces Max Meyer. He get JD Martinez to fly out to Derek Hill in center. Pete Alonso would then ground out to Xavier Edwards at short, and Jesse Winker would fly out to Vidal Brujan in right field. Then top of the sixth, Xavier Edwards le- leading off. He would try a sneaky bunt hit, but hit a little bit too hard. And Mark Vientos with a really nice play throws him out at first base. Then Jake Berger grounds out to Mark Vientos again, and then Jesus Sanchez would uh, ground out to end the inning. And I'm pretty sure that was a four pitch inning there for Luis Severino. So it was either that one or the seventh inning. But one of those two innings were a four pitch inning. So that really helped this case in, in, in throwing a complete game shutout. Then bomb the six, uh, Francisco Alvarez leading off. He would strike out. McNeil would walk. Harrison Bader would fly out. Lindor would hit a single. So first sec for the Mets with two outs. Mets wouldn't get a run, though, as Mark Vins would strike out the in the inning. 
Then top of the seventh, Jonah Bride would ground out to Severino, tosses over. I'm sorry, he would ground out to Francisco Lindor to get the out. Uh, then he would get Derek Hill to strike out swinging, and then Kyle Stowers would line out to left field to end the inning. Then bottom of the seventh, Brett DeHaze, Brett DeGeus would come in to replace Emmanuel Ramirez, and he would get Nimble to strike out. J.D. Martinez would ground out, and Pete Alonso would fly out the inning. So a quick one, two, three inning for the Marlins. Then top of the eighth, Tyrone Taylor would come in as a defensive substitution to replace Jesse Winker in right field. Uh, Otto Lopez would strike out. Vidal Brujan would strike out swinging. Nick Fortes would then hit a double, and Xavier Edwards would ground out to uh, Luis Severino, which then he would throw it over to Pete to end the inning. Then bottom of the eighth, uh, Calvin Foucher comes in to replace uh, to replace Brett De- Brett DeGuias. Uh Tyrone Taylor would fly out. Francisco Alvarez would ground out, and Jeff Mew would strike out. Then top of the ninth, you know, and, and at that time, you know, after after Seve threw in the bottom of the eighth, and he was able to complete that inning. I thought that he wasn't going to come out for the ninth inning, especially when prior to him getting the last out, it looked like Reed Garrett was warming up. So I figured, look, eight eight shutout innings, you take that from Luis Severino, Reed Garrett, go in there, finish the job. But to be fair and to give credit to Mandy, he let him come out for, uh, to pitch the ninth inning. And then another big decision here by Mandy because he starts the top of the ninth, Jake Berger leads off, he hits Jake Berger with a pitch. And at that time, you're like, okay, they probably had a deal where it's like, Listen, you can start the ninth inning, but you know if you let up a walk, a single, or a hit by pitch, we're going to take you out. And Mendy did actually come out, but he looked at Sevy. Sevy looked at him, and he's like, I'm finishing this job. I am finishing this job. And credit to Luis Severino because that's what he did. He didn't let that hit by pitch bother him because he would go on to strike out Jesus Sanchez, get Jonah Bribe to pop out, and get Derek Hill to strike out swinging to end the inning. And you just saw once Sevy got that last out, he let out the biggest roar on the city field mound. And that was just probably such a great feeling for him. And I mean, what a great feeling for him and what a great feeling in the stands because you rarely see, especially in today's MLB, guys throw complete game shutouts. I'm pretty sure this is only the 24th of the season. And you know, you you compare that to other decades, the 90s, the 80s, even the early 2000s, and then the 2010s. Like you rarely, you rarely see a complete game shutout thrown by pitchers these um these days, but Look, all credit to Sevy because, like I said before, he was just dominant and the Mets needed this kind of performance from him. But, like I said now, tomorrow, 12.05, Mets versus Marlins. Mets looking for the sweep, and they desperately need the sweep. You know, the Braves won today, so Mets couldn't make up any ground on them. But they did make up ground on the Arizona Diamondbacks today, who did lose to the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Paul Blackburn's on the mound tomorrow for the Mets. And uh, Belezo. Uh, Belozo is on the mound for the Miami Marlins. So, listen, get the sweep tomorrow. Get the sweep. Take care of business. And then we head into a tough series against the Baltimore Orioles. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for tonight's post game. Like I said at the start of the video, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe and turn on post, post notifications to let you know anytime we upload a video or go live on the channel. And, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Peace out, baby. Let's go Mets.